Hi, I'm John Schmitz. And I'm Lisa Schmitz. And this is a special edition of the Do Something Indie Show that we're sort of mixing together with the second anniversary of the Mars Hill Art Center. And uh, we have a very good show tonight. We have some past guests uh, and some participants at the Art Center that I think you're going to enjoy to hear what has happened here in Mars Hill. And Lisa's got a really funny craft video that I'm going to show. And she's going to fill you in on what's going on uh, around the scene here. And uh, so what do you got going on these days at the Art Center? Well, so since we're having to do things virtually, we are really working on getting craft packets out to families, doing little videos that show craft things that you can do at home with things that you have at home, um, and just really trying to provide some good content for folks while they're having to either homeschool or find craft things to do at home and, and just trying to do things long distance. Oh, and, and tell them all about the little bird that you <coughs> saved that you rescued. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, once you guys get to come back into the Art Center and visit us in person, you'll see that we have a new shop bird his name is Piggy, and uh, you know that saying, oh, when pigs fly, like that'll never happen. So we actually are renovating this house and found a couple of nests with baby birds that were literally a day or two old, and Piggy was the only one out of six to survive. And I reached out to an Audubon Society person and said, how can I save this bird? And she told me what to do, and now almost three months later, Piggy is not only flying, well, but he, if you call that flying, <laughs> <laughs> but she's thriving, and we figured out she's a she. No, oh, okay, he. okay, good. Um, I was worried. <laughs> yeah, and she's thriving, and she's living in a pretty sizable cage. I mean, she's got kind of a mansion going on in that yeah, cage. Yeah, she's uh, she's definitely pampered. She's yeah, definitely she's pampered. pampered bird. Um, but she's doing great, and she's she's just really doing well, and singing, and eating well, and all that kind of stuff. So she's living at the Mars Hill Art Center now. So when you guys come to visit, you'll get to meet her. She's like our watchbird. She's yeah. our watchbird. <laughs> well, hey, we have so many guests that tonight that uh, we need to get to that. So my first guest, uh, well, heck, I'll just go ahead and play the clip. And then, you know what? He's come into studio uh, to talk with us. So let's go ahead and play that clip while we get him set up. Uh, I give you some background on... on uh, Bart, when I met him, uh, we had just purchased the art center about five years ago, and I'm out and back, and here comes this dude on a bike up the alley, and he's like, he's a little bit, let's say he's really, really relaxed, and there is talking about people coming to get him and different things, and I'm thinking, wow, welcome to Mars Hill. Uh, so fast forward a little bit, and uh, some things happen, and give us a little bit of that, how that story happened, to how you turn things around. Well, John, you know, it seemed like um, I got in a place in my life in this journey to where um, I was at a rock bottom spot, or I thought I was. About the only thing left was death and institutions. Uh, my addiction characteristics had overtaken me so much that I just didn't care. I didn't care about my kids. I didn't care about the neighborhood I lived in, the environment, people I was around, and I was around some bad people, let me tell you something. So I like to uh, joke around with people, John, and I, I, I would tell them, you know, I got abducted by an alien, you know, yeah, so I was yeah. running from aliens. Yeah, I think that came I mean? up that day I saw you behind the building, for yeah. sure. <laughs> it was, um, you know, it, was, uh, it wasn't an accident. You know, I, I noticed you guys, you know, as being a member of the Art Center now, um, I would consider you and Lisa as um, angels. You know what I mean? Well, um, I've been called a lot of things. Angel's not on the top of the list. <laughs> well, it just seemed to me that you um, moved into the neighborhood uh, that you're serving in. You provided an art center for people to go, a uh, place that were doing good things. When you do something, like uh, do something into your slogan, you would want to be caught doing something good. Yeah. And let's just face it, the conversation you had of somebody that uh, you would profile to be not in a good place or space in their life, you had common courtesy and enough time to speak, uh, be cordial, have a positive word or two. And that, that's the most things about you and Lisa that stuck out to me. And yes, we have live in the Chateau de Mars Hill studio, the one and only Charles Johnson. And uh, I've, I've asked him to come in for our special anniversary show. And, uh, just to, and he is actually the 
uh, secretary on the board of the Mars Hill Art Center. So he's come a long way from when we first met about five years ago. And uh, we talk almost daily, don't we? Yes, we do. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate it. And uh, so go ahead and tell, uh, tell the audience, uh, I know he couldn't hear the clip we just saw, but we talked about what sort of what it meant, meant to him in the neighborhood. But go ahead and, and, and talk about the art Center a little bit more and, and uh, tell the folks what it means to the neighborhood and what it means to you. Um, the Marzell Art Center, and yes, I'm a secretary on. It's been a blessing to meet these uh, types of individuals, uh, to see a vision and see uh, uh, something put before people. So what they're doing is they're providing the love and they're showing people how to get involved in pottery or uh, arts and crafts with Lisa and flowers, which hopefully one day she'll be able to do a, something for somebody somewhere that has to do with flowers. So, you know, Wait, sorry, are you going to get hitched one day? I, you never know what he has in store for me. So, That's right. you know, we can only hope so. Right? Yeah. Somebody put up with me. Yeah, they better get a saddle. Right, right, right. So, so, you know, um, and you know, like you say, she does the flowers, he does pottery. I've seen youth come in and do karate, self-defense. Um, you know, uh, some of this stuff is, is really good. Uh, and like, like uh, Lisa does flowers. You know, that's planting a seed. It's putting a vision in front of people. And you don't know which one of these young kids are going to get it later in life. Go, hey, I remember that place. I remember what these types of people done for this neighborhood. We've had block parties, a couple of them. Uh, we've had some things for uh, Black Lives Matters and other things that has uh, had a good turnout. And, you know, the um, networking of people and the people you would see and get to conversation with, it seems to be pretty good people, man. Um, and, it, you know, they're, they're, uh, they're going to do something in communities. And it, it's like, um, it, it's really amazing. I've been blessed to be a part of it. I, I so know. would you say in the last five years, you would say the neighborhood has improved? Is that... Would that be a fair yes, comment? Yes, yeah. all the signs and symbols, as I seem to be paying attention to along this journey, is, um, is two thumbs up, or is, uh, it's all looking <laughs> up, you know, uh, that uh, the good Lord has given love to a neighborhood that's been shunned off and overlooked for a long time, you know, so um, it, it's uh, past due and much needed. And uh, we just appreciate you, Charles, and this is one of the reasons we're here, is so we can build relationships like this and uh, work together. And I really enjoy our conversations and, and working together on things. And I know we got something a little bigger coming down the road. We're not ready to announce that yet. We're still looking for a little funding, but we got some things in place uh, that I think is going to make a big impact. So Charles, I do appreciate you coming in tonight and sharing some with us live on Facebook here for our second anniversary. I can't believe how fast time's passing, but you did mention the Taekwondo. So that's a pretty good segue to our next guest. But before that, we're going to have uh, the craft lady. So we're going to show some uh, a couple of clips of Lisa and her craft drops. So I appreciate that. And let's get to that next clip. Hi, everyone. Lisa here at the Mars Hill Art Center. And today I'm going to show you how to make a pinwheel. And you just need some really simple supplies. Paper, glue, scissors, a straight pen, and a pencil or an ink pen. So what we're gonna do is start with a piece of paper. You can use any kind of paper. You can color on some to make it your own. You can use construction paper. I am using some old scrapbooking craft paper. But what you want to do first is make sure that it is cut in a perfect square. This is four inches by four inches. You can make it whatever size you like, but make sure that it is a four-sided square. And there we go. There's your eight spoke pinwheel. So how fun is that guys? Make these at home. Hey everybody, Lisa here with the Mars Hill Art Center and this week's craft drop for our resident neighbors and their families is a sock puppet project. And you're gonna receive a tube sock and the supplies to make the puppet. All you need at home is a pair of scissors possibly. You might not even need scissors. Some good old Elmer's glue and from what we heard from the schools this week is that you guys would have gotten a packet that had some craft supplies that includes glue and really that's pretty much it we're going to supply the things that you put on the sock and then you just supply your hand so i'm going to make the project with a hot glue gun just for speed's sake but you can use elmer's glue at home or you can use a hot glue gun if you have one and your parents approve so here goes Okay, everybody, you should have received a tube sock, a little bit of red yarn, 
a couple of buttons, a couple of googly eyes, and some brown yarn. And now, let's see how she looks. And our family likes to do sock puppets and we always give them a name and we give them a voice. So, there. There's my sock puppet. Let's see, what should we name her? Hmm, what should I name you? Oh, I don't know. I don't know what you think I look like. What should my name be? Hmm. I think your name should be Twyla. How's that? Oh, yes, Twyla. I love Twyla. I want to find all my new sock puppet friends. Can you help me? Sure. Hopefully some of our friends in Mars Hill have made sock puppets and we'll find them. And maybe we'll do a sock puppet video. How's that? Oh, that sounds great. Just great. Okay, Twyla, it's time to go to sleep. Going to put you to sleep right here and wait for all of our friends to join us. She's pretty crafty, isn't she? So this was her idea about the craft drop. So I'll let you tell the folks about how this happened. Yeah, so the, the pandemic hit and I was at the art center one day and I, I was just kind of at a loss. Like, what can we do? How can we serve these families? And as I was sitting at my craft table, looking across the room at 30 boxes of unused, brand new boxes of crayons. And I thought, those crayons cannot sit here not being used while these kids are now not in school and their parents are having to homeschool. And what can I do? And so I thought, I'll just create some craft drops and I'll print out some coloring pages and we had plenty of construction paper. And so the first craft drop was a box of brand new crayons, some custom Mars Hill Art Center crayon or uh, coloring pages and some construction paper. And we had 15 families sign up and I did an e-commerce post on our website that was free and they could sign up and I did no contact drops and dropped them all off on a Friday and I got home and I got emotional and I try to not get emotional saying it now. He, he looked at me he's like what's wrong with you and I said these kids don't have crayons and these moms are texting me saying thank you for the crayons and they're sending me pictures of their kids with their little crayon boxes clutching them so tight and it just did my heart so good. So I figured out how to come up with like five or six more craft drops and, and now I'm, I'm coming up with more. So we have some more ideas, but um, I'm gonna pitch an ask here real quick. Um, <laughs> this is all privately funded and um, we've just been struggling to keep the lights on. And so our ask is that any donation, even a $5, helps us buy things like Mod Podge or glue or markers or, um, paints um, all of these things that I've thought of that we can do little craft drops that really don't cost a lot but when you talk about serving 15 or 20 families with all those things it really does add up and we want to keep the place open so we want to be open we want to serve even long distance and we want to continue to provide craft drops especially now that a lot of these kids are going to be homeschooled um, coming up so yep and what was really cool was we had a, a little open house uh, and the, the kids came back and drew a really cool picture and if I was on my game I'd have it here and I'd post it but yeah. I just thought of it while we were talking but that's just some of the things that you know little things as we uh, like I said we've been two years doing this uh, actually we've been almost six years from the beginning yeah. uh, and we just sometimes there's some days we just don't feel like we're doing an impact but when I was putting this together I'm thinking wow we've really sort of touched some people's lives and, and made some difference with them. And uh, it's it's really cool. Uh, but when you're in it and you're working and you're doing all that, sometimes you don't necessarily stop and say, and uh, smell the roses. So the one family that he talked about, um, we did, I think I did three craft drops with them and they have really little kids, but they came to our open house. And what was it, what did we have an open house for? I can't remember. <laughs> it was before all we do the so much stuff shutdown you know. happened again. Um, and they came in with all their kids and they're like, you're the one that has dropped off all the crafts to our house. And it just touched my heart. And they said, do you have an extra piece of paper? And I said, yeah. So I gave them some paper and they went away and then they came back like 20, 30 minutes later 
And they had done a big thank you painting. They're like a bunch of mini Picassos. It's in, <laughs> it's in my room up on my wall. And it just did my heart so good to know that just one family was touched by having an artistic outlet and something to do with their kids while they're stuck at home. So, And that, that really did make a difference. But speaking of stuck at home, no, let's not, they're not going to be stuck at home. No. Speaking about Taekwondo, that's what we're speaking yeah. about. Hi. Taekwondo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we had a group that, and I, it's funny, I, I, I met these people at a car show and I forgot that I was the person that got them over at the arts. I thought were. you did it. I thought you did it. I'm like, no. so uh, Toby and Brittany, they do the Taekwondo. And uh, so they're on vacation. Or, or we could They would have been live in studio. But I was able to get them on a Zoom call last night, and I recorded it. So we're going to show you that Zoom call. And uh, you can catch up on Taekwondo. And then I got a little clip after that of... Uh, uh, of uh, actual demonstration they did when we had the Marion County Health Department and a business job fair uh, day and the CHOP kids came over and showed off all their skills. So we're going to go right to that first Zoom call uh, then we'll uh, we'll probably come back uh, and then I'll we'll show the little clip of uh, of them getting their uh, karate going or their yeah. jiu -jitsu or no it's uh, that's it that's the one. <laughs> so let's go. Hi, this is John Schmitz, and here we are with some of the people who take advantage of the Mars Hill Art Center, and uh, they are actually on vacation. So we're doing this recorded Zoom call, and uh, uh, this is uh, Toby and Brittany Ling. Is that right? Is that how you say your last name? Ling? That's correct. And uh, I'm going to let them tell you about what they do at the Art Center and what it means to them. So go right ahead. Um. My style is Taekwondo. We're doing a Taekwondo outreach program. And it's mainly for teenagers and kids, but adults are welcome. Uh, five years old and up, we mainly get teenagers in it, and we help them with their situation. You know, te teenagers have problems in school. We do a lot of counseling if they need it. I mean, we're always there. We're like an, a second set of parents. And, uh, uh, but it's Taekwondo, and, but I, I've been, Spreading out a little bit, doing some uh, uh, like boxing techniques. So, since all this riding been coming up, you know, I'm worried about the kids defending themselves. So we've been doing a lot more self-defense, hand techniques. Uh, I just don't want any of my kids to get hurt. Yep, yep. So uh, how did you guys come upon the art center? Uh, actually, we were doing a demonstration at a car show. Um, I believe it was in September uh, a couple years ago. And we were actually at the George uh, T. Goodwin Center, which was really small in space. And we actually seen you, John, and you were really uh, thrilled with what we were doing with Taekwondo and you were invited us over to the, the art center. And it took us a little while to, you know, to, you know, jump on the, bi the bandwagon, but we are so <laughs> thankful that we did um, because you gave us a wonderful area. Uh, we couldn't ask for anything better um, and you know people know exactly what the art center is and where it's at and um, you know just yesterday we went on a prayer walk um, yeah. to pray about Mars Hill and you know what a wonderful way we could spread God's word as well um, in, in our Taekwondo ministry as well with Bible study. Yeah and you all are a member of Charity Church too. How long have you gone to Charity? Well, three years. Three, three years. years. So about the time we've all been sort of putting this mix together. Well, I'll tell you what, Lisa and myself, we really appreciate that you're using the art center. That's what it, that's what we have it for, for people in the neighborhood to be able to help people in the neighborhood. So I, you guys enjoy your vacation. I thank you for taking some time out of it. I think you just got there, didn't you? Yep. Yeah, <laughs> we actually cool. pulled up and uh, it's actually we're in London, Kentucky. Oh, the, so. I know exactly where you are. It's like you should say you must have an accent, a British accent. <laughs> London, <laughs> London, right. maybe, yeah, that's Lee, yes, yes. yes, yes. <laughs> maybe a spot of tea. <laughs> yeah, tea and a kind of crumpet. Yes, have one. <laughs> <laughs> well, we also wanted to tell you thank you for opening your doors to us and allowing us to do our Taekwondo and, um, you know, giving us extra storage space and everything. You guys have just been wonderful. And any way we can help you grow, we are down for it. It's uh, it's a two-way street. We love you guys. Well, hey, 
I'll tell Lisa hi. She's sitting right next to me here. And, okay, uh, yes. And, and, you know, so hopefully you'll get to see the show. And if not, mm -hmm. we'll have it saved for you so you can watch it. But so okay. enjoy yourselves. And I hope you get out of London then sometime before the bridge closes. <laughs> <laughs> right? Well, thank you. And you have a wonderful evening, you and Lisa both. And I uh, wish you guys the best tomorrow. All right. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, I'll tell you what, it is really fun watching the kids uh, taekwondo and, and learn from Toby. He's a great teacher, and Brittany's a, a, a great helper, too, on, on getting the kids straightened away. And guess what? There's plenty of room. And that is on Tuesday and Friday at 6.30? Yes. Until about 7.30. It's yeah. about an hour long. And, uh, hey, bring your kids out and watch. It's fun. I, I like to watch them. Like, they get to chop boards and stuff. So here, we're going to have a next clip of uh, of actual class uh, and then we'll come back for our last guest someone who really is near and dear to our hearts. Um, Kyle McIntosh is a friend who we met just through Facebook interaction and someone saw that we were opening the Art Center and that it was in Mars Hill and shared it with Kyle who grew up in this neighborhood and he messaged me and said, oh my word, I've been wanting to do something like this in my old neighborhood for years and you guys are doing it and it just created this instant friendship. Yep, so we're gonna show a clip of a show that we did earlier in the year, and actually it was so long ago, it was when it, we had actually the one or two snows that we had. I thought I was gonna to have to postpone it, but you know, he came all the way from Crothersville through a snowstorm basically, and it was sort of melting by the time he got here, but uh, he, was, he was very anxious to do this. And then we're gonna have a little bit of a, a news update on this story yeah. uh, about uh, the bridge that we're gonna talk about. So let's get to that clip with Kyle. I'm originally from Mars Hill. Mars Hill? Yeah. Well, you got a shirt on I'm and everything. Mars Hill. How long have you been trying to get that shirt? A long time. Much. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a we, long time. We, we're, we sure aren't very fast, but we sure are slow at getting stuff out. So, But no, you know, it's it's nice, though, you know, because this was, as a kid, this was a dream, you know, Mars Hill Art Center. That's Yeah, so uh, let's let's rewind the, the, the clock a little bit. Tell me, uh, uh, what was it like growing back, uh, growing up back in Mars Hill, back in the day, so uh, to speak? Man, man so... I don't remember like what age I was when we moved here. I was probably, I was young. I was probably five, maybe six years old, like fresh out of kindergarten, if that, um, probably in the first grade. But um, I uh, I remember when we pulled up here, it was just a little bitty, like two bedroom house, tiny. And a lot of the houses in Mars Hill back then were like that. They were real small or they were shotgun style. Yeah. Um, but I remember just being like, oh my gosh, this place is so tiny. And the people next door were outside cussing crazy. You know? <laughs> well, um, I tell you that had changed a whole lot. <laughs> it ain't changed a bit. No. Um, there was people next door just going wild, crazy fighting, you know, and uh, cars going by just, you know, it, it was crazy uh, automatically from the beginning. Um, but I noticed really early on living here as a kid that it was different in other neighborhoods. You know what I mean? Um, oh, yeah. I, I, I lived uh, not in this neighborhood. And, yeah. and I, I tell people, I said there was, you know, two places they told us not to go, Hallville and Mars Hill. Yeah, yeah. And, you're and right. That, I mean, and it was here we weird. are. <laughs> yeah, because when you lived in Mars Hill, or if you live in Mars Hill, probably still now, I don't live here now, but when you lived in Mars Hill, you didn't really think of it like that. But when you went to other places, you did, you know, like when you were here, you were just like, everybody's like that, you know, yeah. everybody's crazy or everybody's like this, you know, um, I know back then, like not a lot of us had money, you know, we were, 
we were lower income, you know, that's what I, I tell people all the time, like growing up in Mars Hill, we didn't usually admit to people that we were from this area. Yeah, you know? we were financially creative. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're like, oh, we're from Decatur, you know. Uh, <laughs> Bozo. Yeah. We're from across the tracks, you know. <laughs> um, but, you know, that was, that's how everybody represented herself. Um, because when you were from Mars Hill, you know, as a, as a young kid, elementary, uh, if you were from Mars Hill, you were poor. You know, not that uncommon for people that live in an underserved neighborhood. And these are the kind of stories that we just, we just love it. You know, we love it when somebody can get excited about something that's going on in here in Mars Hill. And behind me is the actual bridge that Kyle is going to get to paint legally once we get that design approved by the city. So, you know, we're going to bring that, that to you when that happens. So... Kyle is, like I said, a special friend. Um, he has Mars Hill in his heart, in his blood, in his veins. And we are super excited to announce that he is going to be coming to fix that bridge and give it a mural that is going to be absolutely stunning. So he's coming between uh, August 16th and 19th sometime to to give it a new look. You guys are going to be like super excited when you see the design. It is stellar. Um, but it took a long time. <laughs> we, to we, get just, we just permits. got the permits. You know me and permits. We have a long history. Uh, we just got the I permit got last week. I got sucked into the yeah. permit drama yeah. with him. Yeah, it's like I just have a permit cloud around me. But yeah. we, we, we got that done and uh, it uh, it's going to happen. It's so happen. it's yeah. uh, It's going to be cool. Uh, and I come out and see it once it gets done. So, uh, and then keep paying attention to what we're doing on uh, on our page. Yeah. Uh, share it with your friends. Come out and see us. Uh, catch an event. Uh, we we love to to have you come out and, and see the thing and see what we're doing. But so that's going to pretty much put a wrap on things. Uh, can I share one more thing, Johnny? Yeah, you can. It's yeah. Fun. So I I did a little virtual tour today. Um, we didn't have time to get it included in the show, but I'll put it in the comments um, underneath the show so you can see a little tour of the art center and see what it looks like right now and what we're doing. We are renting right now to people as well. Yeah, if you need birthday, that helps parties. us. Substitute, you know. Yeah, birthday parties, reunions, um, we're rated for 75 people. I am letting everyone manage their own uh, number of people based on whatever the ordinance is at the time. If you got a family <laughs> of 75, bring yeah, them all. But, bring them all. Yeah, but it, you know, whatever, whatever Marion County rules are at the time, we'll, we'll let you manage um, however to abide by that and to social distance appropriately for whatever the, the uh, ordinance is at the time. But we are open for that kind of thing we hoping to open again for some art opportunities craft opportunities and what we've been doing for the last couple of years yeah and, and actually i'll be out at with wendy jenkins and i'm sure wendy's watching she never missed the show she's so cool she's got jenkins corner out uh, by brookside park and i'm going to go over and i'm going to have 10 little kids and we're going to do i got i'm going to take a slab over there i'm going to stamp out some stuff and they're going to do some ceramics do some and so that's next tuesday so Heck, you, you don't have to. Uh, we'll come to you. Yeah. I mean, we got the craft drop. You yeah. can come out and do oh. the, the thing. Oh, wait, she's got I, more. I forgot. Um, so forgot. we're partnering with two other organizations, too, to do some virtual crafts and, and arts programs. We're partnering with the Central Library. They received a grant. And so we're going to do some Zoom calls where you can sign up with the library. You'll get a packet of materials that you need to actually do the craft. It's called Arts with Families or Arts for Families. And when you sign up, you'll get to pick up the packet and then be a part of the Zoom call where I actually lead you through the craft as if you were right in the art center with us. And then we're also going to do the same thing with the 4-H folks oh, yeah. um, on this side of town. So pay attention to our Facebook and Instagram accounts. We're going to go out and, and all that. We're going to go out and paint cows with those 4-inch, <laughs> you know, you heard of cow tipping. Well, this is cow painting. We're going to do that. Oh, but if you do want to see some other crafts, because she did like six or seven of them, you go to the YouTube yep. on the uh, Mars Hill Art Center, you know, just put that in there. It'll come up and you can learn how to make a God's eye and all sorts of stuff. She's a great repurposer. Yes. <laughs> so, so. Well, and I also <laughs> still have some craft um, drop opportunities on our website. So if you go to our website, marshillarts.com and go to create in place 2020, you'll see some of the craft opportunities. And if you sign up for those, then I'll drop them at your door, no contact. 
and you can do some arts and crafts with your kids and your families at home. All right. Well, I think, man, we're doing all that. I'm tired just doing that. I'm, we're, we're going to bed early night. I'm tired. <laughs> it's just wearing me out. No, it's great. It gives you energy. We're just happy to do it. So that's going to be a wrap for this show. This is the 40th episode of the Do Something Indie Show and the second year anniversary. I Yay. mean, we're just like knocking them down. Bye, bye, and knock them down. So that's awesome. So on the ending here, I got a couple videos of uh, the art center's condition when we bought it. Uh, the oh. first one, it's a little dark, uh, but it'll, it's got the credits on there. Uh, but it's uh, where uh, that place was just full of trash it's and bad. nastiness, nastiness. Uh, and then we have one of us putting the roof back on, where which is now the gathering space. Uh, right before we got red tagged by the city. <laughs> I remember it well. And then we have our little granddaughter that's uh, just skipping through there with her little... Oh, she's her little, so happy. What's that thing you made? A wishing it's a stick? Wishing, it's a wishing wand. Wishing wand. So yeah. check all that out. It's like, what, 20 seconds, but there's a lot going on yeah. in that 20 seconds. A lot of happiness in that place. And that's our tagline, creating happiness. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. that's right. That's what we're doing. Yeah. So come see us, share with your friends, help us out, whatever. Yeah. You're welcome. And uh, so tune in next week for episode 41. Yeah. Uh, we don't know what that's going to be. Yeah, I do. It's Ryan Wilson. He's doing good things, too. So thanks, thanks for, for watching. <laughs>